everybody, welcome back for another video. This video is going to be a look at a new supply video and talk through my um, travel kit <laughs> for journaling. Um, I did have things in this little roll, but I wasn't sure if I was able to get everything that I wanted in here. And, and I still don't know what all I really want to take, but so I pulled this out. It's one of my La Heat Lab cases, and this tends to fit things better. Um, and of course, I can always slim this down into here or into my smaller La Heat Lab, because this is the, the double one. If I was to put it into the single one, maybe? Let me show you, like this one. There's a possibility I could get some of that, get that stuff that I really need in here, in here. Um, but you can see they're, they're about the same size. This just is different, <laughs> you know? Like this is really thick. I, I think I've got too much stuff in here, but I kind of like that I have that extra stuff in there because <laughs> it didn't fit in here and I, I didn't try it in here. So I have my little foldable cup and I think this will become part of the kit. This is my um, Faber-Castell cup. I just had to find where it was and I, I found the box that I put it in. So. Um, so I, I like that, um, but usually when I'm at home, I just use these little yogurt glass jars. They're from um, that Wee yogurt. So I, I reuse those. We have lots of these, let's say. And usually what ends up happening is we put little tea votive candles in them. <laughs> Especially when the the electric went out, we put a bunch of little tea candles in these and lit them up all over the place. So there's my water, and I, this is an old um, Trader Joe's uh, dressing bottle, and since it's glass, I kept it. And um, trying to buy things more in glass that can either be reused or recycled differently or easily. Um, and so I just keep water on it on my jar or on my shelf so I can pour it into my little jars. So we've got our water. Um, oh, I wanted to share with you a pencil that the husband bought me. It is really, really, really cool. It is a Statler. It is a mechanical pencil. And the lead is 1.3 milliliter, millimeters, millo. I think I've got a, a replacement in here. Maybe not. I thought I did. Or I have some, I don't know where it is, but it's 1.3. Typically it's 0. 0.5 or point, uh, 0. 0.5 or 0. 0.7, but this is 1.3. And it has um, an eraser at the top that you can replace. But isn't that cute? It looks like a, a yellow, you know, a yellow um, mechanic, like a yellow pencil, like a Dixon Ticonderoga. And you can see it's just, it's a nice pencil that erases. And so I just thought I'd share that because I thought it was super cute. Um, and I was going through my stuff and I found this old Statler kit. It has a stencil, lowercase, uppercase, and numbers. It has all these different drafting tools you might need, an eraser, a pencil, a pencil sharpener, and then a, um, uh, what is this thing called? A protractor? 
that what it's called? I can't remember. Wait, I think it went, no. Like that. And so, it has all of the tools you'll need in a little tin. And so I, I pulled it out so I could use, and I, I only used the stencil <laughs> a couple of times. Um, I've got my passport. You saw me with the assembled insert. I haven't started using it yet because I haven't figured out how I want to use it. But once I do, I will share with you that. But this was something that I got for my birthday last month. These are the Carandash Neo Color 2 watercolors, aquarelle, that's what that means. Um, they're like a crayon that is, um, it like activates with water. I did swatch them in here, I think. Uh, maybe I didn't. No, I guess I didn't. Those are my castle arts. No, I didn't swatch them in here. I did use them on a um, tree study. That's gouache. Maybe I didn't. Ah. These are, this was what I used for a tree, for this tree study. So, hey, why don't we do that? Why don't we swatch them in here and maybe do a little something in here in the watercolor insert that I made. This is something that I did the other day. I thought I hit film and I didn't. I have a little set of watercolor brushes I uh that that web page grabby these and they're a wide variety of sizes from zero 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 to a number seven and what I did is I swatched some of my favorite colors in my travel palette to see what the different size brushes did and so I did the exact same thing on each, each brush to see exactly just how big. And you can see. Um, so we'll do something here. And this is my new travel palette. I've pulled out some of my favorite Zen Arts colors. And the reason I went with the Zen Arts colors is they're half pans, not whole pans. And um, so that way I could fit some more convenience colors in there. So here's my swatch card I made of that. And then these are the swatch cards that came with the Zen Arts. Now there's 24 here, but I was able to fit 21 in here. So a few colors had to go and a few colors that I didn't put in were the blues here. I didn't put a manganese or a ultramarine or a thalo or the aqua green. So I've got three nice rows on that little tray of paints. You can see a couple I've refilled I need to find a vermilion replacement because these are Zen Arts. Zen Arts are made by the Phoenix Company, which is also where they make the uh, Winsor Newton Cotman. So the Winsor Newton Cotman, Phoenix, and Zen Arts are the same paints. Um, the Phoenix, if you buy the 48 set, is the cheapest of them all. Mid price is the um, Zen Arts, and they also have another brand called Niji. 
which is a Japanese brand. And, um, and then the more expensive are the Winsor Newton Cotman because of the name and where I live in the United States. So I just thought I would share my new little palette. But what we need, oh, someone's gonna ask, what is this? This is called a view catcher. Um, I've been wanting to do some plein air or uh, painting. And what it is, is it is, if you're like doing eight by 12 or nine by 12, uh, eight by 10. And what it is, is if you're looking at a mountain, but you want to do it this way, you can see. And then you also have these right here for uh, your light values. So you can look through here to see what you're trying to paint. And then you know, so you can set up how it is on your paper. So I have that there. Um, but what else I have in here? Since you saw where I pulled the watercolors from, I do have a little mister to wet the watercolors. I've got a couple of rolls of washi tape if I need that. An eraser, a kneadable eraser, a pencil sharpener. Let's see now. And then this I just keep in the front here because it fits there. Now in here, I've got my aqua brushes, which I'm gonna pull out. A ru I've got a ruler. I think that has water in it, as does that. Those don't, I'll leave those in there. I've got my like pens that don't move in water. Copic, Tombow, uh, Ballpoint. I have a Pilot High Tech C in here, Mica. And then this is a um, pencil that is like a two millimeter lead. So it's a little bit thicker than the um, Statler. Um, it's, this is one of the cheaper graphite holders um, but I have a Stadler in my everyday pencil pouch. This is my rags that I use to wipe off my brushes. I've got in here one of those uh, Mitsubishi Vermilion Prussian Blue, you know, double-sided pencils. I have just a Palomino Blackwing Pearl. And then these are cola race in brown, terracotta red, and light and dark green. Just in case. <laughs> so that's what I have in, in my travel palette. And, and I like that it's really compact. So I think that might stay that way. So I have some aqua brushes. We have the Carandash. Get those real brushes out of the way. We have a Hello Kitty washcloth, a chocolate bar washcloth that I am I use as my rag. And so the set that I got, I got these for my birthday. And you can see they came with these little stickers of the crayons, what looks like a paint tube and a I guess like a little half pan. Yeah, they're stickers. I'm not sure what to do with those, so we're not gonna do anything with them. So there's 15 colors, yellow, orange, vermilion. It's like a red, but it might say like scarlet. This says purple, but I think it's more of a magenta. This is a violet, which I think is more purple. Uh, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, turquoise. This is like a dark green. This one is called um, yellow green, ochre, brown, noir, black, schwarz it says also, uh, the German word for black, and then white, blanc. 
I've never used the white. But I could see using it um, if you're trying to mix pastels, maybe. Um, and these are just water brushes. This is an Arteza water brush. And then these two are Pentel. They came from a set of four. Okay. So let's not use that. We got our little jars here. And I'm just gonna fill up with a little. And I've always wondered, how do you guys get rid of your water from your jars? I've heard some people say, let it dry and then wipe out the jar and then throw the paper towel away. And then I've heard others say just dump it down the drain, but some of my paints have real cadmium in them and that's not a good thing to be dumping down the drain because that's not good for water, for the fish and stuff. So it's, I've, I've thought, you know, do I just break down and buy the, what is that brand? The ones that aren't made from animal product, but are also good for the envir environment. I can't remember that brand that that girl on YouTube helped create. Anyways, let's use this brush. Just because I grabbed it and there it is. So, and this is not watercolor paper. It is just a sketchbook. So, it is really not meant for this. <clears throat> so we're going to color a little bit of yellow. See how vibrant it is, even just as a crayon? Now, Look how pretty. So there's yellow. See how nicely it moves? And I know this is an aqua brush, but I use the little jar just so I don't, you know, use up this too fast. Does this, oh, it does clip on the back. So there's the yellow. Here is orange. Yep, orange. We're just gonna go over that. How pretty. Very pretty. Now here's the vermilion. I've been loving the color vermilion lately. We have coffee getting delivered today, so I might have to get up and... And so here is vermilion. Look how pretty. And see how it's really creamy and they just blend away. And this is not watercolor paper. Um, I think with these, I think they would work better on like a hot press paper. You know, because it's a smoother paper. I think if you're using these on a more textured paper, like a uh, cold press paper, I think 
you might run into some trouble because um, that's so pretty. It's kind of like a crimsony scarlet color. Make very pretty florals. I feel the kitty by my feet. Look how pretty that is. And I hear a little kitty. <laughs> now this one, they say purple. Nope. Yeah, this one they say purple. I don't understand. She has all of the things she needs. The only thing she can't do is sit on the table with me. Because I have all of the stash on the table. She's been very needy lately. Which I don't mind. Because she's my baby. Now, this one they say is violet, which I mean, I can understand. Like African violets are a really pretty dark purple. <laughs> so there's the violet. Look how pretty that color is. And see, I think they activate well enough on this. You know, this isn't a hot press paper at all. It's just a thin, very little texture sketch paper, really meant for like graphite type of sketch. So there aren't many grooves for the What did they call this color? Ultramarine blue. Now, I wonder, do these move after you've water activated them? That I don't know. They're very similar to the um, Jane Davenport. I had like this. She called them like water pastels. I wonder if they are, um, once you're done with them, do they stay permanent? Kind of like the, um, What's that thing I have? Like some of those inks? Like those, um, oh. Jane Davenport had some. Like the Viviva sheets. And this color was cobalt blue. Hue, so it's not even a real cobalt. She's had F O O D, she's had T R E A T S, she has a fresh bowl of W A T E R. The only thing she has not had is the K I T T Y N I P, Kitty Nip. I don't think she knows that word. That's really pretty. Oh my. We'll leave that one so I can see if it will spread. Here's a green. What did they call this color? Emerald green. I don't know, when I think emerald green, I think a little bit brighter than this? Let's see. I 
Well, when you add the water, it looks more ammo. Same, she's still there. Let's see what that looks like in the camera. Lila, back up. Yeah. See, nice, pretty. Now this one is yellow green. Let's see. It's a pretty green. If any of you have these water aqua rails by Karen Dosh, how do you use them? What do you do with them? I'd love to know what you got them for and did you use them the way you thought you would? Um, I know they have more than this 15 set of colors. You can buy them open stock. So if you have like a favorite color palette, like. I really need like some of these in here, which I got a couple, but like these, like the ochres and the, the different burnt siennas and umbers and stuff. Um, <laughs> I really need something like that because that's, that's, those colors are my jam. Here's, but this one, this is a ochre. But they do have open stock, so, and they have one, I want to say like, what, a hundred colors or something like that? One thing I find very interesting is Kar Karan Dash, the word right here, if you were to spell that in Russian, but it would be the exact same Karan Dash, that word means pencil in Russian. So I, I find that interesting that a Swiss company, their product has the, the name, which is the word for pencil in Russian. Here's the brown. And we really only have one more color to swatch. And she's jumping up on the counter. I think she wants the kitty NIP. Because that's where she is. I might have to pause. Yeah, let me pause and give her a little, you know what? It will calm her down. I'll be right back. Come on. Okay, we're back. I don't even think she wanted that. Okay. So, the last color we have is noir or black. We'll do that down there. Oh. 
Let's see what that does. It's quite dark. I like the Pentel because they don't get as dirty. They tend to stay a little bit clearer. Now, I wanna see, will this move? It moves a little bit, you can see. But, you can see that line. So they're more kind of a semi-permanent. I'm gonna take a sip of the coffee. We had to get a new coffee maker. The old one we had finally died. I'll insert a photo so you can see what we got. We got one of those um, Hamilton Beach like brew stations where um, it's easier to fill the water, it's easier to fill the coffee filter and the um, and that, and it's everything is easier to clean and there's no glass craft that can break. You just put your mug up, press on the little thing, and then it pours. Then when you relieve your mug it stops. <laughs> it's really, really, really nice. So these are the Karandash. Let me get a pen that I know is waterproof and won't move. This is, um, I want to say a Kuratake. Uh, um, it has that um, carbon fiber it's, it's what they call a desk pen. It's the new version of the desk pen. Um, Burgess and like Romany, I even have an old one somewhere. It was like black and it came to a pointed uh, end. And um, this is just the new version. They come clear and they come with like a, a black glass. I've got a, an unused one somewhere. So these are the Karan. Dash. What are they called again? Where's that little sheet? Neo color. Two. Aquarelle. Just so you can see, uh, what car on dash? That's car on dash, which is pencil in Russian. K a r a n d a sh car on dash. That's that would be basically like S C H car on dash. So wait, what were the colors again? Oh, there's all this on here. It's like the history. 1915 origin. Nineteen thirty-one Prismalo. Nineteen fifty-two Neo Color One. Nineteen seventy-four Neo Color Two. 1988 Supra Color, 1990 Pablo? Anybody know what that means? Hmm. So, this was called Juan or Yellow. This was Orange. 
This was vermilion. This red was called scarlet. This they called Borbe, purple. This they called violet. This one was ultramarine. There's a um, Daniel Smith, I think, French ultramarine that's really pretty. This was cobalt blue. This one was called emerald green. This was yellow green. This is ochre. This was brown. brown. And this is black. There is a white, but there's no need to um, do the white. <laughs> I wonder. We'll cap that up. And it's like an extra fine nib. I, I'm not sure if it comes any bigger than that. I wonder if I was to take the white. Oop. These are very fragile, so I'd probably just crack that in a million pieces. If I was to take the red, on top of that? Now, one thing to make sure you do is if you color a white crayon of any type over a color, make sure you scrub off the tip. See how much was still there? Now, let's see what happens. This is white on top of red. Look at that, it's like a um, flesh color. Like a pretty pink. Pretty in the pink. Isn't she? Sorry. 80s, I was watching 80s movies the other day. You can also take a wet brush on it and gather some of it up. Let's see what happens. Oh, look at that, even lightens it a little bit more. Now, what if I was to use, let's just keep using red. If I was to use very little red, if I was to go red and then I was to go all of this white all around it and you see number one just the coloring with it is lightening it okay now I'm gonna get some fresh water look at that it's a nice light pink. So you can use these for shading. So that was red, a mixture of red and white, and this is more white, less red. That is very nice to know. Here, I'm gonna Just making sure I got all the, there we go. I think that's all they wanted. I think they wanted, you know what, animals. So that's nice to know. I wonder if you can mix them in a palette. Let's try something. 
I might have one clean palette left. Yes, I do. It has a cat hair in it, of course. Let's take the Ultramarine. And let's do this in a, a different notebook because that page is totally full. Let's do it in this insert. In my Olive Traveler's Factory. And these are smooth. These are smooth pages. Because that's the watercolored side. That's smooth. Smooth, smooth. Okay. So, I'm going to take the Aquamarine, or Ultramarine. And I'm just laying a thin layer down. Maybe I do need the watercolor side. Yeah, let's not do that. There. So here's the ultramarine. Yeah, maybe we do need a little bit of tooth to the paper. I think the back side was a little smooth. So there's ultramarine. Very pretty. Now take a sip of my coffee. Take a sip of yours. Now, we're gonna color ultramarine. We're seeing this happen in person. And then we're gonna color the white on top. Look at that, it kind of makes what I would consider like a periwinkle blue. Um, because I, I don't know what type of fillers. But you can see where the blue was originally held down there. Okay. Now. If I was to use even less blue, like that. And lots and lots of white. Just to see how light of a color we can get. There's some white flakes there, like all crayons. Wow. Now, We have our little palette. We're gonna color a little bit of blue. Then we're gonna color a little bit of white. And now, we're gonna add 
water to the blue. Now this will be just blue. But very watered down. And now the blue and the white watered down on a palette. I make sure I get all that white mixed up. You can definitely see that the white interacts with the color. So. And see, I don't think it, oh, maybe it does cap. Hmm. So this is just ultra marine, right? This is ultra marine with white mixed on paper. And this is just a dab of ultra marine with more white mixed on paper. This is ultramarine only mixed on porcelain palette. This is ultramarine and white mixed on porcelain palette. We'll just call it Karn Dash study. Very, very interesting. So I have a question. For those of you that have these watercolor, aquarelle, crayons. What do you do with them? How do you use them? Do you um, use them to add color to a journal page? Do you uh, use them to layer a background color that you know won't move much? Um, and then add watercolors and acrylics and inks and stuff on top of it? You know, I, I really wanna know how people use these. I'm gonna search YouTube because there's tons of, oh wait, there's something here on the back. Okay, if I do this, there's no going back. Look at that, there's a swatch sheet. Including pencils, pastels, fiber tipped pens and paints, the wide range of water soluble permanent products, water soluble and permanent products from Karin Dosh accompanies artists and lovers of color through every stage of their artistic development. These nine creative tools offer you infinite possibilities to draw color, shade, overlay, watercolor, and paint. It is amazing what you can do with Karin Dosh products. I've seen the Karin Dosh, what are those, luminance pencils? Those look lovely, lovely, lovely. I have Prismacolor, and I have the, um, like the 72 set, and I have the 72 set of the, um, uh, Derwent Color Soft. There's no way I'm gonna buy any of the Karin Dosh. <laughs> now, there, like, might be a color or two that I might buy, like a Prussian Blue or a Payne's Gray or something like that, a unique color, um, but there's not any time soon for me to buy 
<laughs> those pencils, but they do look lovely, but I'm gonna use what I have. And I like to see the different shades that you can get. I do think mixing on a palette, you get a better blend than mixing on the paper because you can still see where the blue originally was. Even though we got a pretty hue of like a sky blue. Yeah. Anyways, so there's a kind of look at what I've, I'm gonna be playing with this weekend. Uh, what do you have planned? Do you have any new supplies? Are you gonna go planer, painting? Are you creating a little travel kit? I think this is gonna be a good, kit for me because it has watercolors, it has pencils, it has aqua brushes, it's got pens, it's got all those things that I know I'm gonna need on the go and I can even fit a little sketchbook in here. I wonder. I have a new one of these that I haven't used. Ugh. It'll fit. Just barely. <laughs> but I could thin out some of the things and I could even fit my little sketchbook in there. We'll see. Okay, thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.